Um, and it's my pleasure now to welcome uh, Kieran Derek Brown uh, as our next speaker. Kieran is FSC Biolinks Project Manager with the Field Studies Council. And he's going to talk about FSC Eco Skills Framework. Kieran. Thank you to the National Biodiversity Network for inviting me. Um, I'm here today to talk about a new project, um, the Eco Skills Learning Framework, which is kind of coming off the back of my project. So, uh, John mentioned that I manage the FSC Biolinks project. Um, that is a National Lottery Heritage Fund and Field Studies Council funded project that is all about recording and identifying under-recorded and difficult to ID invertebrate groups. And it forms the background of what I'm going to talk about today. So just to bring anybody up to, to speed who doesn't know about that project, it's a programme of different engagement and training activities to designed, designed to boost recording in the West Midlands and South East of England. And that really revolves around these structured learning pathways um, built up of courses that we've designed. And, and they're designed to take people from an introductory level through to an advanced level. And we've worked closely with a lot of recording schemes to do this as well. So you can see here, our arachnid ID training pathway has been endorsed by the British Arachnological Society. So, um, and each year of the project, it's a five year project, we put together a, a plan with training courses designed to get individuals all the way through up that pathway. So here you can see the 2020 Beetle ID training pathway that, that never was, and I'll come to that in a bit. But aside, aside from the Biolins training courses, which are part of these structured training pathways, the FSC runs a lot of natural history courses. Um, and these are run across all of our centres in the UK. They're compiled into a brochure. Um, but they're not designed in a structured way. So each course kind of stands on its own um, and it, it, it's tutor led in, in, in the content as well. So yeah, these course brochures, we these were quite an expensive thing for us to mail out, produce and mail out. And, and they're not the most environmentally friendly way of um, dealing with our course provisions. So uh, being center led as well, it meant that the courses quite often weren't as joined up. So the individual courses might might have been really good products, but the whole package wasn't as joined up as we would like it to be. And as you can see from this map of FSC centres, our geographic coverage of the United Kingdom is not complete. So this is something that we've been looking to change. Um, this year, we've we've had a few things that, that, have, that have come up. First of all, uh, our... Internally, staffing-wise, Sue Townsend, the FSC Biodiversity Learning Manager, she retired earlier this year, much to my dismay. Sue was a fantastic mentor and boss for me. Um, but one good thing that has come out of that within the FSC is that the FSC have had a look at how they um, deal with biodiversity training provision, and they actually appointed a director-level position to appoint Sue. So I think that's a great credit to Sue that they felt that she needed to replace with a director. And that gives the FSC new strategic direction when it comes to biodiversity training. So changes were coming within the FSC and then this happened. Uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus pandemic happened and that led to mass cancellations of our courses because we were no longer able to deliver them either within the Biolinks project or within the wider FSC training provision. Now that actually, th th there's some positives to that because it gave us the hard reset that we needed to actually address how we deliver our, our training across the FSC. And we had a look and we thought about some of the things that we wanted to achieve if we were gonna re review and change how we did things. So first of all, we wanted to train more people. It's great the number of people that we were training, but we wanted to engage and train more. Alongside that, that means more money for the FSC. So the FSC has quite a big workforce. We have big expensive buildings to look after. So actually we need more money to sustain the, the great work that we do with our adult training provision, but also with our, our work with schools, etc. We wanted to improve how we look after our associate tutors. So we wanted to think about how we can better support and, 
and manage our relationships with those. We wanted a more complete network. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we had a network across the UK and not just based around our centres as well. So we wanted to bridge those geographic gaps. We wanted to introduce digital training provision as well. Most of what we did was at our centres, um, but we wanted to break into the into the virtual training world as well. We wanted to make our, and, and that kind of goes hand in hand with making the FSC more accessible. Um, so digital training offering, offerings mean that we can engage people within their own home and people that maybe couldn't get to an FSE centre even within the regions that we operate. We wanted to improve our standards, so we wanted to improve the teaching standards and the quality of our training and again that means that we can strive for accreditation down the line as well. So that's what we wanted to achieve. What I'm going to briefly go over is what we've done in the interim to try and um, try and do that and let you know about what we've got coming up. So the first thing I, do, I would like to mention are our tutors. So we've got this network of tutors across the UK, but they've always been managed at, at a centre level. Um, we wanted to bring that all together so that we've got a more comprehensive knowledge in one place within the FSC about our tutors. So we compiled a central associate tutor database and we're looking at opportunities training opportunities for our tutors as well. We consulted with a wide range of associate tutors about what we're doing and we're also looking at diversifying our tutors and bringing in um, some next generation tutors, some young tutors um, that can help us in, engage with new audiences as well. So we're looking at how we can engage um, across more of the UK as well. We're not looking at opening up centres, unfortunately, in all of these places that are marked on the map. Um, what we'd like to do is follow the Biolinks model where we've operated non-FSC Biolinks centres as well. So we'll be looking at how we can deliver training in some of the areas that we, we currently don't really reach by working with partners and looking for venues that we can deliver training at. We've also designed and built through the Biolinks project a new virtual learning environment using the Moodle platform and we want to make sure that we maintain teaching standards. We're not looking at doing training courses that are a simple PowerPoint that people click through. We're looking at interactive content on our platform that rivals what we deliver at our centres and each weekly session would include a 45 minute live session with an associate tutor. So we're not talking about taking that training away from our expert associate tutors we're talking about bringing them in to teach live sessions via probably via zoom um, and i'm happy to chat with people more about that in the networking room if anybody's got any questions on the standards what we wanted to do as well was introduce um, a levels framework so there are some really good levels frameworks out there from uh, and competency frameworks from cie and from fisk and, and actually from our violence project so what we did was we came up with a level framework that was quite well defined and it maps against all of those other frameworks. So I have a nice complicated spreadsheet that maps it against the FISC, maps it against my violence project levels and maps it against the CIE and competency levels as well. And the idea is that we come up with a framework that, that isn't just about FSC training provision but works across the whole sector as well. And we're happy to share that with the sector. This is, go this is going to be a publicly available document and I'm happy to consult with other, um, other training providers and other organisations within the biodiversity sector about how we make this work for everybody. Two, two minutes. Uh, perfect. That should be right, John. <laughs> Um, I want the last thing I can do, the, well, the second to last thing I want to introduce is these learning frameworks that we're, that we're developing, the building blocks rather than being courses are topics. So we've created the, this modular approach to how we train. Um, four topics would make up one day of training. Topics would be delivered weekly online. As you can see here, we've got one for bees. If I show you earthworms, which is my speciality, this is, this is the how that would break down at the different levels for earthworms and it allows us to build a range of courses, a, a wider range of courses than we, that we had before, both online 
and at venues and tailored to different audiences. And the final thing I just wanted to reassure the sector with is about how we're going to deliver this. So in order to do this, we're aware that we need we need the staff and the infrastructure to do it. So a new team, the EcoSkills team, is currently being developed. There's a round of internal interviews as we as the FSC go through um, a restructure at the moment. And those positions that are not filled internally will be going out very soon. So if anybody's interested in those, please let me know. Uh, there's an email address on there. Um, and within the BioLens team as well, we're also covering some posts that were that were on pause because of coronavirus and we've got two jobs out for recruitment right now, a project officer in the South East and a part-time marketing officer. So, yeah, I think that's me. Um, I might stop sharing there so that... Um, and I, yeah, that should that should be me on time, John. I hope you're spot on time, Kieran. Thank you. And that's actually that's snatching victory from the jaws of defeat, isn't it? It's actually taking real positives out of what could have been really difficult for you. Yeah, I mean, within the BioLinks project as well, I, I talked about this at the NFBR conference and the videos online. There, there have been some real opportunities coming out of this because of the quick yeah. pivot we had to do with virtual training, and we're engaging more people than we ever did. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's very positive. It's great. Right. Questions to Kieran. Anybody got any questions? Joe, have we got any questions? We haven't had any questions come in yet, I'm afraid yet. Um, oh, it was too clear. Too clear. I'll, I'll ask a question. <laughs> I'll ask a question. Neil. Neil. Yeah, just, um, I just noticed that heading, the um, uh, Natural History and Environmental Arts. What was the... Um, connect yeah, it's because the FSC, the FSC traditionally have two course brochures, the, the arts brochure and the natural history. And they they almost been combined. So some arts that, are, that we're classing as leisure stuff are being dealt with separately. But some environmental arts, such as um, we're looking at a landscape art framework, uh, I think botanical illustration might be in there, things like that. So they're things that are closely linked to natural history. Um, I haven't given any examples of that. It's in this because because of the audience that we've got but we do have a bit of a call out for anybody that's interested in teaching for the fsc and has ideas about about frameworks that they would like to be involved with then please do uh, get in touch and and let us know i will actually type that email address in the chat as well so that it's it's visible thank you thank you anybody any other any other questions joe uh, not so far, I'm afraid. Just a lot of love for the project and for you, Kieran. <laughs> no, it's good. Yeah. I mean, you know, lots yeah, of I, comments, I, lots of comments as to how exciting it is, how brilliant it looks, Kieran. So, yeah, yeah. big it's thumbs up from everyone. Brilliant. I think one one last point I'll make that I, I forgot because I rushed through the last slide is that to be issue with those that have been involved with BioLinks, the, the BioLinks project will still be running for another two years and we'll be taking ownership of the biological recording and invertebrate aspects of the EcoSkills framework. So we'll be adopting them within the BioLinks project. So we'll still have invertebrate specialists at the helm of all the invertebrate work um, and the biological recording work as well. Great. Thank we, you. We have had a question come in ah. now. Um, Quickly. Do you have to focus on different aspects in the online training as you can't do field work or use microscopes? And that's from Emma Knowles. Um, so what I say is there is some field work that we can teach online. Um, it depends on exactly what the competences are and how, how we design that. But with a lot of ID, I recognise, as, as an earthworm specialist myself, none of the earthworm ID stuff is really going to be online because it's not pragmatic to be able to teach it that way. Each topic... There's, a, there's two checkboxes on it. Can it be delivered online? Can it be delivered at a venue? So far, every single one can be delivered at a venue, but there are a number of topics that we recognise will have to remain place-based topics. So that is incorporated into the framework and it's done under, consult under consultation with the experts that deliver that training for us. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kieran. That was, that was very interesting.